Today's video delves into gripping accounts from the ocean, where encounters between humans and sharks turn dangerous. These authentic narratives of resilience highlight the formidable courage and tenacity of individuals confronted with life-threatening situations in the sea. As we navigate through each story, we'll witness the remarkable ways these survivors combat their fears and overcome the aftermath of their encounters. Join us as we explore these extraordinary tales of survival and discover the outcomes of these harrowing experiences. In the bright and sunny year of 2001, three friends decided to spend their day surfing at Bondi Beach in Australia. The beach was famous for its huge waves, and many people came there to play in the water and have fun on the sand. Among the friends were Jake Matthews, Liam Johnson, and Emily Clark. Jake had been surfing since he was little and loved teaching his friends how to catch waves. Liam was always energetic, laughing and splashing around while Emily, who loved photography, took pictures of the beautiful day. They all had a great time riding surfboards and enjoying the warm sun. The sea was sparkling and the waves were just perfect for surfing. People around them also had fun swimming and playing games on the beach. But suddenly, the fun day turned into a scary moment. A huge shadow appeared in the water near Jake. It was a giant shark, possibly a great white, one of the most famous sharks known for being very big and sometimes coming close to beaches. At first, Jake didn't see the shark, but Liam, a bit farther away, spotted the vast shadow moving toward Jake. Liam shouted as loud as he could, trying to warn his friend. Everyone started to panic. The people on the beach began to scream and run out of the water. Jake, Liam, and Emily tried to paddle as fast as possible to return to the beach. Their hearts were pounding and they could hardly breathe because they were so scared. The shark came closer and closer to Jake. Quickly, it bumped into his surfboard, making Jake fall into the water. The shark's sharp teeth scratched Jake's leg and he felt a sharp pain. He was terrified but knew he had to keep calm to escape the shark. Liam and Emily reached out to Jake, grabbing his arms to pull him onto Emily's surfboard. They paddled with all their might, trying to get away from the shark and back to the safety of the beach. But as they made their way to the shore, their minds were fraught with fear, not just for Jake's injury, but for the genuine threat that the shark might follow them, driven by the scent of blood. Reaching the shore felt like an eternity, each stroke haunted by the predator's shadow. The moment they touched the sand, their fear of the shark's return intensified, realizing they were not entirely safe. Previously enjoying a serene day, people on the beach were thrust into an unexpected crisis. Their joy replaced with a collective dread. Liam, with shaky hands but a determined spirit, quickly fashioned a makeshift tourniquet from his wetsuit, wrapping it tightly around Jake's leg to stem the bleeding. Emily, her photography forgotten, scanned the waters, her eyes darting back to the sea, half expecting the shark to breach the shallow waters in a relentless pursuit. The group's frantic efforts to apply first aid were underscored by a palpable fear of the shark's return. Each moment was thick with tension, starkly contrasting the day's earlier carefree joy. Despite his pain, Jake kept whispering reassurances to his friends, his voice a mix of gratitude and fear, knowing that the immediate danger had not passed with their escape from the water. As they worked to secure Jake's wound, the beach's lifeguards sprinted towards them, their presence reassuring. Yet even as they took over, providing professional medical assistance, the fear of the shark loomed over them, a silent threat that underscored the fragility of their leisurely day at the beach. The transition from an idyllic day of surfing to a life-threatening emergency was abrupt, leaving the friends and the surrounding beachgoers in a state of shock. Their actions, driven by the instinct to survive and protect one another, highlighted the depth of their bond and the unpredictability of nature. The arrival of the ambulance was a beacon of hope amidst the fear. The paramedics, trained for such emergencies, quickly took charge, and their professionalism starkly contrasted the raw nerves of the beachgoers. As Jake was loaded onto a stretcher, his friends accompanied him, their hands holding his a silent promise of unwavering support. The fear of the shark's return persisted as a shared nightmare that seemed to follow them even away from the water. The drive to the hospital was a blur of emotions. Jake thanked his friends for their quick thinking and bravery despite his pain. Liam and Emily, still reeling from the shock, found comfort in Jake's resilience. The fear of the shark had bonded them in a way they never expected, 
transforming their friendship into a deep-seated connection forged through adversity. At the hospital, the reality of the situation set in. The doctor's confirmation that Jake would recover was a balm to their frayed nerves. Yet the trauma of the day's events lingered, a reminder of their vulnerability in the face of nature's unpredictability. The incident at Bondi Beach became a pivotal moment in their lives. The shared experience of fear, not just of the physical injury but of the psychological terror of the shark's possible return, became a catalyst for change. They became more than just friends, they became survivors, their bond strengthened by the ordeal. In the following weeks, Jake's recovery was swift, thanks in no small part to the support of Liam and Emily. They visited him often, each time reliving the events of that day but also talking about the future. They discussed the importance of beach safety, the respect for the ocean and its inhabitants, and how they could use their experience to educate others. Their bond, tested by fear and solidified by survival, became a testament to the power of unity in the face of danger. The beach, once a place of carefree joy, now held a deeper meaning for them. It was a place where life's precariousness was laid bare, and the strength of friendship and the human spirit were triumphantly displayed. The story of Jake, Liam, and Emily and their encounter with the shark at Bondi Beach will forever serve as a narrative of courage, resilience, and the unyielding power of friendship. It was a sunny day turned lesson in survival, a stark reminder of nature's unpredictability and the enduring human capacity for bravery and compassion. Not long ago, there was a scuba diver named Sophia Lee in the vast and sparkling blue sea off the coast of Hawaii. Sophia was not just any diver. She was known among her friends and fellow divers as one of the most experienced and brave explorers of the ocean's depths. On a bright and sunny morning in 2003, Sophia embarked on a journey to visit the beautiful coral reefs hidden beneath the waves near Hawaii's shores. The coral reefs were like an underwater paradise, filled with bright, vivid, almost magical colors. Fish of all shapes, sizes, and colors swam among the corals, and rays of sunlight pierced the water, creating a dance of light and shadow on the ocean floor. Sophia had explored many parts of the ocean, but the coral reefs of Hawaii held a special place in her heart. She loved the peacefulness of being underwater, surrounded by the wonders of the sea. Sophia marveled at the beauty around her as she dove deeper, equipped with her scuba gear and a small diving knife for safety. She had a camera to capture the breathtaking sights, hoping to share them with others and inspire them to love and protect the ocean as she did. But today's dive would be different from any other. As Sophia ventured farther, she noticed a group of sharks in the distance. Reef sharks and hammerheads were gliding through the water with an elegance that belied their fearsome reputation. Sophia had encountered sharks before and knew they were generally uninterested in humans. She kept her distance, observing them with respect and fascination. However, curiosity got the better of her. Wanting to capture a closer photo, Sophia slowly moved nearer, careful not to startle these magnificent creatures. The sharks seemed undisturbed by her presence, continuing their graceful movements through the water. But then, without warning, one of the sharks, a large hammerhead, turned and swam directly toward Sophia. Her heart raced as she realized she had inadvertently come too close to the shark's path. Sophia knew she had to act quickly. She remembered everything she had learned about shark behavior and tried to make herself appear as large as possible, hoping to deter the shark. Despite her efforts, the shark continued its approach and Sophia could see its eyes and the sleek shape of its body cutting through the water toward her. In a moment of sheer instinct, Sophia prepared to use her diving knife not to harm the shark, but to protect herself if necessary. Once a place of beauty and wonder, the ocean suddenly became a scene of tension and potential danger. Sophia stood her ground facing the oncoming predator with a courage she didn't know she had. She hoped the shark would turn away, but she was ready to defend herself clinging to her love for the ocean and her respect for its inhabitants, even in fear. As the shark drew closer, Sophia could see the details of its formidable appearance, the strength and power it embodied. It was a reminder of the wildness of the natural world, a world she had chosen to explore and embrace, even with all its risks. This moment, suspended between awe and fear, would be a turning point for Sophia a test of her resolve and understanding of the delicate balance between humans and the vast, mysterious ocean surrounding us. 
The standoff between Sophia and the hammerhead shark seemed to stretch for an eternity. She held her diving knife before her, not as an aggressor, but as a barrier between herself and the approaching shark. Her breaths were slow and measured through her regulator, each exhale sending bubbles racing to the surface. Then in a fleeting moment that arrived both unexpectedly early and yet not a moment too soon, the shark veered off its direct path, circling her in a display of curiosity rather than aggression. However, the encounter was far from over. Another shark, drawn by the commotion or perhaps by an instinct, darted toward Sophia from the side. With less time to react, Sophia pushed herself back, using her fins to create distance. But the shark's speed was more incredible, and in its close pass it grazed her arm. The sudden contact startled Sophia, and in her haste to evade further interaction she collided with a sharp part of the coral reef. Pain shot through her arm, a stark burning sensation that signaled a significant injury. Blood clouded the water around her, a visual reminder of the ocean's inherent dangers. The sharks, possibly attracted by the metallic scent of blood, circled closer, adding urgency to Sophia's need to escape. She propelled herself towards the surface using all her strength and experience, aware that her rapid ascent might pique the shark's curiosity. Breaking the surface, Sophia gasped for air, the safety of the open air a stark contrast to the dangers lurking below. She signaled for help as her boat was near her location. The crew quickly responded, pulling her aboard and assessing her injuries. The cut from the shark's graze was deep, requiring immediate first aid to prevent infection and minimize blood loss. The injury from the coral was more complicated, with fragments embedded in her arm, a painful reminder of her harrowing escape. Back on shore, medical professionals tended to Sophia's wounds carefully. The shark's graze required stitches, a physical memento of her encounter with one of the ocean's most formidable predators. The coral injury was cleaned meticulously, ensuring no remnants would cause further issues. Throughout it all, Sophia remained brave and thankful for the swift response of her team and the medical staff. Recovery was slow but steady. Sophia's injuries served as a humbling experience, reinforcing the respect she held for the ocean and its inhabitants. Rather than deterring her, the encounter with the sharks only deepened her commitment to marine conservation. She shared her story widely, advocating for the protection of shark habitats and emphasizing the importance of coexisting with these misunderstood creatures. Sophia's brush with danger in the depths of Hawaii's coral reefs became a pivotal moment in her life. It reminded her of the fragility of human existence in the vast tapestry of the natural world. Yet, it also reinforced her belief in the power of respect, understanding, and coexistence with all marine life. The ocean remained a place of wonder and beauty, its mysteries and dangers a constant allure. Above all, Sophia's experience was a testament to the strength and resilience of the human spirit, a story of survival, respect, and an undying love for the underwater world. In 2000, on the remote and beautiful island of Isla Mujeres in the Caribbean, a group of tourists had planned a perfect day filled with adventure and relaxation. Among them were Michael Thompson, his best friend David Wilson, and their new friend Anna Rivera. They had all met during their trip and decided to explore the island together, drawn by stories of its clear blue waters and vibrant marine life. On an exciting sunny morning, they set out for a day of snorkeling near the shore eager to witness the underwater beauty Isla Mujeres was famous for. The sea was calm and the sun was bright, promising an unforgettable experience. Michael, who had always been fascinated by the ocean, led the way as they swam further from the beach. The crystal clear water allowed them to see the colorful coral reefs and schools of fish that darted around them. David and Anna followed closely, laughing and pointing out the fish they recognized. As they ventured farther, Michael noticed a secluded area that seemed even more vibrant. He signaled to David and Anna, urging them to follow. The excitement of discovery pushed them forward, the beauty of the underwater world captivating their attention. However, unbeknownst to them, their presence had attracted the attention of a resident of the deep, a hungry bull shark lurking in the shadows. Bull sharks were known for their unpredictable nature, and this one had ventured closer to the shore in search of food. Michael, leading the group, was the first to spot the shadowy figure approaching through the water. Initially, he mistook it for a large fish, but as it neared, the unmistakable silhouette of the shark became clear. 
His heart raced as he realized the danger they were in. Reacting quickly, Michael signaled to David and Anna, pointing towards the shark. Panic set in as they saw the bull shark charging towards them, its powerful body cutting through the water with alarming speed. Before Michael could react, the shark was upon him, its mighty jaws clamping down on his leg. The pain was immediate and intense, a burning sensation that seemed to spread through his entire body. Michael fought to keep calm, knowing that panicking would only worsen the situation. David and Anna, seeing their friend in trouble, sprang into action. They knew they had to distract the shark to give Michael a chance to escape. Grabbing whatever they could find, snorkels, flippers, and even a waterproof camera, they began to splash and make noise, trying to draw the shark's attention away from Michael. Their efforts paid off as the shark, momentarily confused, released Michael and turned towards the new sources of disturbance. Seizing the moment, Michael, with the help of his friends, began a frantic swim back to the safety of the beach, his injured leg sending jolts of pain with every kick. As they neared the shore, the reality of what happened began to sink in. They had survived a shark attack but were not out of danger yet. Michael's leg was severely injured, bleeding profusely, and he was growing weaker by the second. Reaching the shore, they called out for help, their voices filled with urgency. The beach, once a place of relaxation, had become the scene of a dramatic fight for survival. As people rushed to their aid, David and Anna did their best to administer first aid, using towels to stem the bleeding while waiting for emergency services. The moment stretched into eternity as they waited. Trying to keep her voice steady, Anna reassured Michael that everything would be okay and help would come. Pale and sweating, Michael managed a weak smile, grateful for the bravery of his friends. Their quick thinking was perhaps the only reason he was still alive. When the ambulance finally arrived, paramedics took over, expertly assessing Michael's condition and providing immediate care. As they loaded him onto a stretcher, Michael's mind was a whirlwind of emotions, pain, relief, and an overwhelming sense of vulnerability. The attack had happened so fast, a stark reminder of nature's unpredictability and power. David and Anna followed the ambulance to the hospital, their snorkeling gear forgotten on the beach, and their plans for a day of adventure turned into a nightmare. The ride was quiet, each lost in their thoughts, replaying the attack repeatedly. They wondered what they could have done differently and how they could have prevented the encounter. But deep down, they knew the ocean was a wild and untamed place, and today they had come face to face with one of its most formidable inhabitants. At the hospital, doctors worked quickly to treat Michael's injuries. The bite was severe, requiring surgery and stitches, but fortunately, it was not life-threatening. Michael would recover, but the physical and emotional scars would take time to heal. The experience had changed them all, a vivid reminder of their mortality and the need to respect the natural world, its beauty and its dangers. In the days that followed, Michael's story spread through Isla Mujeres. Tourists and locals alike were reminded of the importance of caution when entering the ocean and the respect owed to its inhabitants. Michael, David, and Anna's ordeal became a cautionary tale of survival, bravery, and the strength of friendship in the face of adversity. As Michael began his recovery, he often thought about the shark, the creature that had instantly changed his life. He felt no anger, only a profound respect for the ocean and its creatures, a reminder that humans were just visitors in their world. The day of snorkeling had started as an adventure, a chance to explore the beauty of the Caribbean, it ended with a lesson they would never forget. The ocean was a place of wonder and danger, and every dive was a privilege, a chance to witness the majesty of life beneath the waves, always with respect and caution. Their trip to Isla Mujeres had not gone as planned, but it had left them with invaluable lessons about nature, friendship, and the resilience of the human spirit. As they left the island, they knew they would carry the memories of that day with them forever a stark reminder of the day they came face to face with one of the ocean's most feared predators and lived to tell the tale. In the vast blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico, an offshore oil rig stood, a giant of metal and machinery reaching down into the depths of the sea. This rig was home to a crew of hardworking individuals, including Jack Martinez, a skilled worker. Jack had been with the rig for years, and his expertise in maintenance and repairs made him an invaluable team member. 
On a bright, clear day, Jack was suited for a routine dive to inspect the rig's supports. These inspections were crucial for ensuring the rig's safety and operational integrity, a job Jack took seriously. He loved the sea, its vastness, and its mysteries, but also respected its dangers. As he descended into the calm, clear waters, Jack was greeted by the familiar sight of the rig's massive underwater structure. Sunlight filtered down from above, casting an otherworldly glow on the metal beams and supports. Fish darted around him, unbothered by the human intruder in their midst. Jack inspected, checking for signs of wear or damage, but his trained eyes were missing nothing. It was a job he had done many times before, a routine that felt as comfortable to him as walking on solid ground, but today was different. As Jack moved around a considerable support beam, he felt a sudden shift in the water. A shadow loomed from the depths, enormous and menacing. Before Jack could fully process the danger, a tiger shark, massive and powerful, emerged from the shadows. Jack's heart raced. He knew the risks of diving in these waters, but encounters with sharks of this size were rare. The tiger shark, curious or perhaps agitated by the intrusion into its territory, moved closer, its eyes fixed on Jack. In a moment that felt both immediate and eternal, the shark attacked. Jack, caught off guard, had only seconds to react. He tried to fend off the shark with his tools, but the creature was relentless. With a powerful bite, the shark inflicted a severe wound on Jack's leg, pain flaring through him like wildfire. The attack seemed to satisfy the shark, which disappeared into the deep blue, leaving Jack alone, injured, and in shock. The pain was intense, and blood clouded the water around him. Jack knew he had to act fast if he was to survive. Jack began the arduous journey back to the surface by summoning all his strength and training. Every movement sent pain shooting through his body, but the thought of his colleagues on the rig, his responsibility to them and his sheer will to survive, propelled him upwards. Reaching the surface was only the first hurdle. Jack still needed to get back onto the rig, a daunting task given his injuries and the rig's sheer size. He signaled for help, hoping his colleagues would see him and come to his aid. As the minutes passed, Jack fought to stay conscious, to keep afloat. The open sea, which had always been a place of wonder and adventure for him, had become a scene of survival against its most formidable inhabitants. Back on the rig, the alarm was raised. Jack's colleagues, realizing he was in trouble, rushed to his location, ready to do whatever it took to save their friend and teammate. The situation's urgency was apparent. Jack desperately needed medical assistance, and every second counted. This moment, fraught with danger and uncertainty, would test the resolve and camaraderie of the entire crew. The sea had shown its power, but the human spirit, with its capacity for courage and quick action, was ready to respond. As Jack's colleagues on the oil rig sprang into action, their training kicked in with seamless precision. A small rescue team led by Alex Ramirez, one of Jack's closest friends on the rig, quickly assembled. They lowered a rescue basket into the water their eyes scanning the sea for any sign of Jack or the shark that had attacked him. Spotting Jack struggling to stay afloat, pain etched across his face, Alex urgently directed the team. They maneuvered the basket close to Jack, shouting instructions and encouragement. With the last of his energy, Jack managed to grasp the sides of the basket, and his colleagues hoisted him up to the rig's safety. Once on board, the gravity of Jack's injuries became evident. The bite wound was severe, bleeding profusely and Jack was in shock, his skin pale and his breath shallow. The rig's medic, Sarah Chen, immediately took charge, her calm demeanor a comfort in the chaos. She applied pressure to the wound to slow the bleeding and administered pain relief to make Jack as comfortable as possible. Her swift actions were crucial, stabilizing Jack's condition until they could get him to a hospital. The rig, usually buzzing with the sounds of machinery and work, fell silent as the crew awaited updates on Jack's condition. Alex stood by Jack's side, offering encouragement, reminding him of the strength that had always defined him. The bond between the crew members, forged in the isolation of their offshore life and the shared understanding of its dangers, was palpable in the room. Hope filled the air as the emergency helicopter arrived, cutting through the sky with its loud blades. Jack was carefully loaded aboard, accompanied by Sarah, who would continue to monitor his condition during the flight to the mainland. The crew watched as the helicopter lifted off, its departure marking the end of a day that had started like any other, but had become a stark reminder of the perils of their profession. 
In the following days, the crew received updates on Jack's recovery. The surgery was successful, and though the road to full recovery would be long and challenging, Jack's resilience and the support of his friends and family promised a positive outcome. His encounter with the tiger shark became a story of survival, a testament to the human spirit's capacity to face nature's most formidable challenges. Jack's experience also sparked conversations about safety and the importance of being prepared for any scenario. The crew revisited their emergency protocols, ensuring they were as robust as possible. Jack's ordeal had changed them all, instilling a deeper appreciation for the fragility of life and the strength found in unity. Months later, Jack returned to the rig, his presence a powerful symbol of courage and determination. The crew welcomed him back with open arms, their cheers echoing across the Gulf of Mexico. Jack's return to the waters that had nearly claimed his life was a bold statement of his respect for the ocean's power and his refusal to be defined by the fear it had once instilled in him. The shark attack off the coast of the Gulf of Mexico would forever be etched in the memories of the oil rig crew, a reminder of the dangers they faced in their pursuit of the Earth's hidden treasures. But more importantly, it underscored the incredible strength of human bonds, the unwavering spirit of survival, and the profound respect for the majestic, untamed sea that connected them all. On a radiant day filled with the promise of joy and relaxation, the Harris family decided to visit the renowned False Bay in South Africa. The bay, known for its stunning views and inviting waters, was a popular destination for locals and tourists alike, eager to bask in the beauty of the South African coast. Michael, Sarah Harris, and their eight-year-old daughter Lily had been looking forward to this day trip for weeks. They had packed for a picnic, swimming gear, and plenty of sunscreen, determined to make the most of the sunny day. Lily in particular was excited to play in the water, build sandcastles, and explore the shallows with her parents watching over her. As they arrived at the beach, they were greeted by families laughing, playing games, and enjoying the warm sand beneath their feet. The Harris family found a spot near the water's edge, laying out their blanket and settling in for a day of fun and relaxation. After applying sunscreen and donning her favorite swim goggles, Lily couldn't wait any longer and dashed towards the water, her laughter mixing with the sound of the waves. Michael and Sarah followed closely, smiling at each other and grateful for the precious family time. The water was refreshing, the perfect antidote to the warm sun overhead. Lily splashed around in the shallows, her parents watching her as they waited nearby. The beach was a hive of activity with other children and swimmers enjoying the water, making the bay feel like a community of joy and laughter. However, the serene atmosphere was abruptly shattered. Without warning, Lily was pulled underwater, her screams muffled by the sudden submersion. Panic immediately set in for Michael and Sarah as they realized their daughter was in grave danger. Instinctively, Michael plunged into the direction where Lily had disappeared his heart racing as he scanned the water for any sign of her. Sarah screamed for help, her voice carrying over the water, alerting nearby swimmers and lifeguards to the emergency unfolding. Beneath the surface, Michael's eyes met with a sight that chilled him to the core, a giant shark, possibly a bull shark, known for its robust build and presence in shallow waters, had Lily in its grip. Without a second thought, Michael lunged at the shark doing everything he could to distract and fend off the predator. The battle was intense, with Michael using all his strength to fight for his daughter's life. Sarah, meanwhile, had entered the water ready to assist in any way possible. Together they managed to land a few decisive blows on the shark, forcing it to release Lily from its jaws. With adrenaline surging through their veins, Michael and Sarah quickly pulled Lily to the surface and hurried back to the shore, their hearts pounding with fear and relief. Lily was shaken and had a few scrapes and bruises, but was miraculously alive and conscious. Back on the beach, the atmosphere had turned from one of leisure to one of emergency. Lifeguards rushed over with first aid kits while other beachgoers gathered around, offering support and assistance. The Harris family was enveloped in a cocoon of concern and care as they tried to process the harrowing experience. As Lily received medical attention for her injuries, which were thankfully minor, the reality of what had happened began to sink in for Michael and Sarah. Their day at False Bay had taken a turn they could never have anticipated, transforming a family outing into a fight for survival. 
The Harris family sat and huddled together on the beach, wrapped in towels and the relief of having survived such a terrifying ordeal. Lily, nestled between her parents, was quiet, the shock still evident in her eyes. Michael and Sarah exchanged glances, their expressions of gratitude and disbelief. Once a place of joy and laughter, the beach had become the backdrop for a starkly different memory. Around them, the mood had shifted. What was once a bustling scene of holiday cheer was now subdued, the recent scare reminding everyone of the ocean's unpredictability. Lifeguards patrolled the water's edge more vigilantly, their eyes scanning the horizon, while families packed up, their day cut short by the unexpected drama. As the adrenaline began to wane, Michael, Sarah, and Lily thanked the lifeguards and the people who had rushed to help them. Words felt inadequate, but their heartfelt gratitude was palpable. The day's excitement took its toll on the decision to head home. The ride back was quiet, each lost in their thoughts, replaying the day's events. Lily, looking out the window, squeezed her parents' hands tightly. The encounter had left its mark physically and emotionally, reshaping their perspective on nature and its inherent risks. The Harris family talked openly about the incident in the following days, processing their fear and reaffirming their bond. They sought counseling to help Lily overcome the trauma, ensuring the experience didn't leave lasting scars on her young mind. The incident at False Bay became a pivotal moment for the Harris family, a stark reminder of life's fragility and the strength of facing fears together. It didn't deter them from enjoying the outdoors, but instilled a newfound respect for the natural world and its inhabitants. They returned to the beach eventually, but with a deeper appreciation for the safety measures and a keener sense of their surroundings, their love for the ocean undimmed but now tempered with caution and wisdom. In the warm waters off Key West, Florida, a group of friends embarked on a deep-sea fishing adventure they had been planning for months. The sun shone brightly in the clear blue sky, promising a perfect day for their quest for big game fish. The excitement was palpable as they boarded the charter boat, their eyes alight with anticipation of the day ahead. The captain, a seasoned fisherman known for his expertise in navigating the deep waters of Florida, welcomed them aboard. He briefed them on safety and the day's plan, ensuring everyone was prepared for the adventure. The boat then set off, easing through the waves, heading to the captain's favorite fishing spots known for their abundance of big game fish. As they reached the open sea, the beauty of the ocean unfolded before them. The water changed colors, from the light blue of the shallows to the deep, mesmerizing blue of the deep sea. The friends prepared their fishing gear, casting their lines into the inviting waters, their hearts racing with the possibility of what lay beneath. After some time, the tranquility of their weight was shattered by the sudden tug of a line. One of the anglers, Tom, had hooked something massive. The rod bent under the weight and Tom braced himself, his friends cheering him on. The battle with the catch was intense, each pull and reel a testament to the strength of whatever was on the other end of the line. The struggle went on, Tom's determination unwavering. His friends took turns assisting him, ensuring he stayed energized. The captain watched closely, offering guidance to land the catch successfully. The excitement grew as the fish began to tire, its jumps and thrashes less frequent. However, their anticipation turned to shock when a massive hammerhead shark suddenly emerged from the depths, its eyes fixed on their catch. In a swift move, the shark bit down on the fish, its mighty jaws clamping tight. The scene was chaotic, the water churning around the shark and the fish. In the confusion, Tom lost his balance. The force of the shark's bite and the pull on the line dragged him towards the water. His friends reached out, trying to grab him, but it was too late. Tom plunged into the ocean, the shark still engaged in its battle for the fish. Panic set in among the crew. The captain immediately initiated emergency procedures while Tom's friends shouted for him, desperate to locate him in the water. Sensing Tom's presence, the shark turned its attention toward him, leaving the injured fish behind. The situation was dire. Tom was in the water, injured and vulnerable, with a hungry hammerhead shark nearby. His friends and the captain knew they had to act fast to rescue him and ensure his safety. The adrenaline surged through them as they prepared to confront the shark and save their friend. Their fishing trip turned into a rescue mission in the vast, unpredictable ocean off the coast of Key West. The urgency of the moment galvanized the crew into immediate action. 
The captain maneuvered the boat closer to Tom while his friends prepared to distract the shark and retrieve Tom from the dangerous waters. The ocean, once a source of excitement and adventure, had become a scene of a desperate rescue. As the boat approached, Tom's friends grabbed anything they could use to fend off the shark, fishing poles, life buoys, and even a cooler. They banged on the side of the boat and threw objects into the water, hoping to divert the shark's attention away from Tom. Curious but cautious, the hammerhead circled the area, its gaze shifting between the boat and Tom. While struggling in the water, Tom felt fear grip him as he saw the massive shark nearby. His leg throbbed with pain from where the fish hook had caught him during the chaos, a sharp reminder of his vulnerable state. Yet the sight of his friends fighting for his life filled him with a determined will to survive. One of the friends, Jake, donned a life jacket and, with the captain's nod, dove into the water with a spare life buoy. The others watched, hearts in their throats, as Jake swam swiftly towards Tom, dodging the curious shark. Reaching Tom, Jake wrapped the life buoy around him, shouting encouragement, telling him to hold on just a little longer. Back on the boat, the captain and the remaining friends pulled with all their might, hauling Tom and Jake back to safety. The shark, perhaps deterred by their efforts or losing interest, slowly disappeared into the deep blue, leaving behind a churned water trail. Once on board, the relief was palpable, but Tom needed immediate medical attention. His leg was severely injured, and the hook wound deeper than they had initially thought. The captain called for emergency services, advising them of the situation and their location. As the boat raced back to shore, Tom's friends tended to his injuries, doing their best to stop the bleeding and keep him conscious. The camaraderie and quick thinking of the group had averted a potential tragedy, but the incident had left its mark on them all. Landing at the dock, they were met by paramedics who quickly took over, praising the group for their swift actions. Tom was rushed to the hospital with his friends by his side a testament to their bond and the day's harrowing experience. As Tom recovered, the story of their adventure, the peril they faced, and the bravery they showed spread in the aftermath. The experience had changed them, a stark reminder of nature's power and the unpredictability of the sea. Yet it also reinforced their resolve, respect for the ocean, and the importance of friendship and teamwork in the face of danger. Their deep-sea fishing trip off the coast of Key West had started as a quest for adventure, but ended as a journey of survival and unity. The encounter with the hammerhead shark would be a tale they'd share for years, a narrative of fear, bravery, and the unbreakable human spirit.